How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And it is Fun Friday here on the show. That's right. I'm here on a Friday. And we got a lot to talk about here today. We got news, we got lineups, we got all sorts of stuff coming up for this weekend, including the Marigold debut. We have got SmackDown coming up tonight, Rampage and Collision. And uh, Collision and Rampage have both already been taped. Rampage actually was taped last Saturday, and Collision was taped on Wednesday. And uh, we'll go over the lineups. We won't do spoilers here, but there is definitely something coming up on uh, Collision this week, which will be newsworthy on, uh, I guess, on the show Monday. Also got some uh, notes from the last couple of days we haven't talked about. Eddie uh, Kingston and his surgery. Kenny Omega. Ronda Rousey talking Vince McMahon. Shayna Baszler and Bloodsport. A couple of departures from AEW. Survivor Series. We'll talk about those rumors and what I can tell you about those. And uh, and the Dynamite ratings from uh, from this past Wednesday, which I'm sure Mike talked about yesterday, but... I want to talk a little bit about that. And then, yes, we will take your text messages and phone calls. Don't call yet. It'll be later on the show. But if you want to text us now, it's 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. F4WOnline at gmail.com. Also, F4WOnline threads, Instagram, and Cameo. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. But uh, I'm not doing much tweeting unless you subscribe. But you can still follow me there for, like, exciting retweets of the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. So a lot to get into here today. We will take phone calls, as noted, later on. And uh, Mike Sempervivi will join us after the break to get into all of this. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. It's Fun Friday here. Woo! Yeah, we're going to take some calls later. And uh, you can text now if you want to, 425-780-7566. That is the text message line, 425-780-7566. Don't call that number. It doesn't work. Just wasting your time. F4WOnline at gmail.com. And uh, and my subscriber Twitter, at Brian Alvarez. A lot been going up there because I don't tweet anywhere else anymore. So sign up today and join the fun, everybody. Tonight's SmackDown, and we have got... Tiffany Stratton appearing, probably with her new pink uh, briefcase. She said she's going to deck it out. I think they actually already had that made like over a week ago, which might have been why I predicted she was going to win. Mm. Nia Jackson, Meechin, and Baron Corbin and Apollo Crews versus Angel and Berto. Baron Corbin, full babyface now. And if you've not been watching NXT when he was there, this dude's an awesome babyface. He's great. So that should be fun. And then Rampage is also tonight. Uh, No spoilers here. Malachi Black and Brody King versus Tony Nese and Arya Daivari. (laughs) Who are you going to put your money on? Thunder Rosa versus Rachel Ellering. Roderick Strong versus Ben Bishop. And Shane Taylor, Lee Moriarty, and Anthony Agogo versus Darius and Dante Martin in action and ready. Oh, my God. Imagine if Ben Bishop got the win over Roderick Strong. Man, he'd be in a better position than Javon Evans right now, right, Remember, Brian? people got so mad that I would give away spoilers. <laughs> they, would, they would actually be mad at how I read the names. Like, that's what was actually spoiling these matches. We have got uh, Collision, also taped. Orange Cassidy and Kyle O'Reilly versus Matt Taven and Mike Bennett. Takeshita versus Tommy Billington. Anything yeah. can happen, guys. Just don't get mad at me. <laughs> Bang Bang Gang versus TBA. For some reason, we can't say who the TBA is, even though it's, you know, taped. Roderick Strong versus Dalton Castle. Sky Blue versus Harley Cameron. Nyla Rose also versus TBA. And Top Flight versus Lee Moriarty and Anthony Agogo. So, yes, we had Shane Taylor, Lee Moriarty, and Anthony Agogo versus Darius Dante in Action Friday. And we've got Darius and Dante versus Moriarty and Anthony Agogo on Saturday. So hope you like that feud two days in a row. All right. Let's get into some of the news here. First old news. 
This isn't very fun for Friday. I'm just telling you what's going on. We'll get to the calls later. So uh, Eddie Kingston has undergone knee surgery. So that's good. If you recall, he broke his leg and tore his ACL meniscus and, uh, yeah, he tore his ACL meniscus and broke his leg when they did that uh, spot onto the table, but his leg hit the guardrail. The suplex. And essentially the, the story was, like, we can't fix your knee until your leg is no longer broken. So he's been out of action for months waiting for his leg to heal, and now he has gotten knee surgery and so he's probably, you know, double or nothing 2025 would be uh, a safe bet for when you'll see Eddie Kingston again. But hopefully he's uh, he's resting up and uh, and all is well. So uh, best wishes to him. Then we've got uh, Shayna Baszler, blood sport official. And... Uh, She's facing Miyu Yamashita on that show. It's been announced. Also, Mike Santana versus Homicide. And both Julius and Brutus Creed are working the show against opponents still to be announced. I still hope it's a tag team match. No, come on. Yes. The only, here's oh, the thing, Mike. On. Here's the thing. The tag team match in MMA is only fun if it's a shoot. If it's exactly. worked, If it's worked MMA... A tag team match in worked MMA is just a tag team match. Brian, it's not you've the seen same. The creeds work. It would not take them long for them to forget that anything is worked depending oh, on who stop. they were in They're the ring with. They're not shooting on anybody. And it would be inc- no. I'm telling you, hook and shoot style. Everybody, go. All you kids, go back and look that up. No. Hook and shoot tag team. Match. Yeah, hook and shoot was a shoot. Yes, that's why it was called is, hook and shoot. That's what you want to present on this show, is it not? You but it's a display? work. No. So you want a bunch of speedball Mike Bailey, uh, Dolph Ziggler matches as opposed to the possibilities of the creeds no. against somebody awesome in a tag team shoot match? No. Nah. I either want I either want tag team shoot matches or just do work shoot matches. But a work shoot tag team match is just a tag team match. It's just ridiculous. We got some AEW departures. Old Ric Flair is gone. Oh, <laughs> He was there as part of a sponsorship with Wu Energy. R.I.P. Wu Energy. You know, it was so funny. Like, when he first showed up, I could have sworn that uh, that they announced, like, he'd signed a two-year deal and a multi-year deal with Wu Energy and everything. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. Well, deals uh, are made to be broken like contracts are easy to get out of, and you had no use for Flair. He was there for the Sting stuff. You got some money out of Wu Energy, I would assume, and you didn't use Flair all that much, and good. Let it all go now. It you couldn't help the show. I don't think the drink, uh, if anybody's had it, there hasn't been any reports that it's any good, and it just kind of looks cartoonish there in comparison to what WWE is now doing with sponsorship. And frankly, what with, with what AEW does with their crossovers and things like that, frankly, it's out of place. Let it go. Goodbye. Well, the weird thing about it is, like, when he first showed up, he was like a character. He was this special, special gift to Sting. <laughs> He's a character. Which, which is odd. I got you a gift. Another human. And then they announce a multi-year. It's like the toy. A multi-year. Oh, almost, almost as a, as a. Uh, never mind. A multi-year sponsorship deal, and it hasn't even been a year yet. And then Flair said he signed a two-year deal, and now it's just like it's all done. So what happened? I mean, allegedly there were contracts there. And then Tony Khan was asked about it, and he said Flair was essentially paying them to be there. Which certainly does not sound like a two-year deal. And no, no, Ric Flair was not paying them to be there. Wu was paying them. Well, and I, Flair's I think... coming out of his pocket for anything. Well, no, but I mean, I think there was a lot of stories going around that weren't true. Is my point, but mm-hmm. I don't know exactly what the actual story was. I still want to know exactly what went down at the Pete's place. There's still questions to be answered there. And then C.J. Perry is no longer with AEW. Oh, hot and flexible. She said her time had just finished. And Seized up. she can go anywhere. So, I mean, she could go to WWE if she wanted to. Well, I guess they'd have to want her as well. But uh, she said it's hard to compare AEW and WWE now that she's worked for both. AEW, much more sport-driven. It's been great to see so many people get jobs there. WWE is in her heart and soul. 
She loves the drama, viewing it as, quote, the greatest franchise in the world. Well, she's a lot nicer about it than a lot of people have been in leaving AEW and talking about it. Look at that. Just didn't say anything crazy or greasy or anything like that. Just it's very sports-based, and my heart is with WWE. What about her husband's? I'd like to know that. He's just he's just doing nothing. Got a shoulder injury, I guess. elbow yeah. injury, allegedly, and he's just, he's not wrestling, so. No. I wonder how it works in terms of uh, contracts being frozen. Can he just sit at home till his deal is up, they let him go, or are they going to freeze it till he comes back? Well, I mean, I think that's He a, clearly doesn't want to be there. I mean. I was going to say, isn't that then a, I don't want to say an ethical issue, but isn't that more of a, how much... How nice do you have to be? Because, yeah, I can see you if you're the company and these contracts are standard across wrestling that, yeah, we can freeze you because of the injury time and we have the ability to use you. But if somebody really doesn't want to be there and really, really doesn't want to be there and if they are going to perform for you, may not give it their all or it may be more trouble than it's worth. Go ahead and let them out of that deal. I think it's just a matter of making a decision about do you want that person there or not. So uh, WWE could be bringing back Survivor Series in November. So WrestleVotes reported there had been significant discussions regarding the show being held at the Intuit Dome in Inglewood, California. New arena seats uh, 18,000. Clippers. And I have been told that that's where Survivor Series is going to be. So uh, they've got SummerSlam, Cleveland Browns Arena, August 3rd, Bash in Berlin, in Berlin, August 31st, Bad Blood, October 5th in Atlanta, and Crown Jewel, November 2nd in Riyadh. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. You know, you really sound out of sorts here. You are not used to these Fridays, are you? There's no news. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to get mad about? Ratings? Well, there's a ton of things you can get upset about. Ratings? Sure, you want to? Well, Dynamite did 691. Get angry. And a point two three. Not angry, but they lost NXT. Yeah, they did. NXT beat them in 18 to 49 with a point two four. Yeah. And uh, Dynamite barely beat them in viewership. So, you know, people were interested in seeing what happened with Trick losing that title. And uh, good numbers. I mean... You know, point two three is not bad for Dynamite, but, you know, it wasn't even like a special episode of, of NXT. It was just a pay-per-view recap show, and uh, and they got the win in 18-49. to 49. Uh, Their 18-49 to 49 is up 20% from the same week last year, and for AEW, the 18-49 to 49 is down 20%. So NXT is up 20% in 18-49. to 49. AW is down 20% in 18 to 49. And uh, we had a guy, I think he was on the board the other day. He got really mad because oh, we were talking about the decline of uh, of AW and, you know, pointing out that, you know, one of the reasons that AW is down is because WWE no longer sucks. And a lot of people have chosen to start watching WWE. I mean, the whole rise of AEW was literally when WWE was at its absolute bottom of the barrel worst. And they have gotten significantly better. And so AEW has lost some of their audience back to WWE. And this guy's reaction was, No! People have just found out that AEW has always sucked! That was his, his, he was really mad. And it's like, if you actually like look at where AEW is down and where WWE is up, it's like that's exactly what's happening. AEW fans have left to watch WWE. They're more into WWE now, and it's tough. So you know, there's this is the first generation of fans that grew up without real competition. I'm sorry, TNA was not real competition for most of the time, and it certainly did not present itself and did not start in the same way that AEW did on the same network that it did, owned by the same guy that owns it now with all of the bells and whistles and Chris Jericho, and here we go. And WWE, a lot of that time, sucked, which is what opened the door for people to have interest in New Japan. It opened the door for the rise of these sorts of things to happen, and they happened, and a lot of people tuned in. 
and found out that they're WWE fans. I like wrestling, but I actually really like WWE. That's I, I, That stuff's cool, but I like WWE. Or I saw it, that stuff sucks. It's not for me. I like WWE. There's a lot of people that like it or not. It used to drive people nuts who grew up in other parts of the country to have everything WWE WWF that is slammed down their throats for so many years but now more than ever much like there's one NFL no matter what comes along much like there's one UFC no matter what comes along and we've seen a lot of promotions come along and we saw what UFC did and the strategy they had why are they running so many shows because they want to become synonymous with MMA and for a lot of people a lot of fans they found out that WWE for them is synonymous with pro wrestling and they have tuned out. I think the bigger problem for AEW is I know they have more than 700,000 fans that will watch them on TV. They absolutely have that. They've had it most of the time that they've been on, but now this is a fifth straight week under 700,000 and it seems very sluggish but what they do have going for them this week at least for one week is a show that almost all AEW fans that watch it thought was a good one even people that don't like AEW they like the Danielson match and or they liked the main event and what happened afterwards with Tony Storm because it was a heavy heat thing so this was about as good as a week as they could have. So they better be in with a better number in high. Well, they demo. have a much bigger card next week. Like but next week but, is a pay-per-view caliber show here. I But here's the thing. Regardless of what's on it, it better be over where it's been because it does start to get, again, if you're them, really worrisome that you have actually hit a rut now. It was one thing to fall under 900,000 and 800,000 and then 700,000 with the excuses of the playoffs and this and that. Well, now you're like under 700,000 now repeatedly and it's, you know, that, that can't be good, especially again when so much talk has been around them trying to get a new deal and trying to get as much as they can out of WBD. I think that next week's show is probably going to be in the low 700s. But here's the thing, everybody. Here's the thing. It's not just the brand WWE and the brand AEW. Like, if you look at the quarter hours for all of the WWE shows, the reason that they are doing so well is because they have done a much better job creating stars and booking storylines that people are into. People were super into the Bloodline story and Cody Rhodes it started when they were super into the Sami Zayn story. They're into the bloodline right now. They're into Cody. They're really into the Judgment Day and Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. And they've done a great job with these characters and these stories week after week on television. And that's what's causing people to tune in. Next week, Swerve and Okada, champion versus champion. If you watch a lot of AEW, like... Pretty big match. It's the world champion against Okada. What are they going to do? But why is that match happening? I mean, what's the story? The story is Swerve challenged Okada. That's it. They've never had an issue before. There's no story going into it. It's just a match with two big stars. And that's a lot of how AEW books. Let's put two big stars together. MJF and and uh, Will Ospreay, you know, MJF just returned. And when they announced it, everyone was like, wow, already? Didn't feel like it was time yet. And then, of course, you know, that's, uh, that's, the, main, that's the main deal. As far as, like, creating stars, you know, you can, you can count a few that, that AEW has, has, like, created. You know, Swerve is in a much better position now. But a lot of their big stars just walked in as big stars. They didn't create Okada. They didn't create Will Ospreay. They didn't create Mercedes. You know, these people walked in as giant stars. But who have they created? What stars are they creating right now? I mean, they tried with Daniel Garcia, but, I mean, that didn't really move numbers at all. So there's a lot going on here other than just the brand WWE and the brand AEW. People are preferring the product 
that WWE is putting on right now compared to the product that AEW is putting out there. Yeah, and WWE, you can see that in the numbers. WWE had a lot of momentum, and the problem with AEW is the what WWE is doing right, which is maintaining and progressing storylines and maintaining momentum. AEW oftentimes has big one-off shows. We talk about it with their pay-per-views constantly and how awesome they are. Whether you like what's taking place on there or not, they're giving you your money's worth, and most people walk away from them pretty satisfied or they have a big angle on tv like they did last week but now you're looking at all in and all out eight and ten weeks down the line and it's like okay can they maintain momentum for that long history has indicated many times they can't and that's their biggest problem is consistency as well too and that's why these numbers have dropped a little more whereas wwe's has gone up a little more because regardless of what you thought of the bloodline storyline it has progressed it has morphed it has stayed interesting whether you like it or not as well as many of the other things that they've done so again it comes down to a lot of issues of why they're in the position they're in right now this person says, uh, CJ and Miro not together anyway, right? Yes, they did break up. Oh. And I think he's, for, for he's X, then. back in... Uh, Bulgaria? Yeah. Oh. Come back as Miroslav Bornyashev so Brian can be happy. This person says, I get this feeling when it's all said and done, Javon is going to be the one to dethrone Obafemi, despite how see he it. has been booked so far. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll believe it when it. I see it. Oh, will you stop? Have you seen it? I haven't. I have. I'll yet, believe it when I what? see it. I'll believe it when I see it. But he's got to lose to somebody, and boy, I hope they got somebody ready to take that torch from him because he's been hot. And I hope he again. They need guys in the main event. They need some big dudes too. That would be nice there. Him in that position in there with Trick and some other people. I like Obafemi's year. This person here says, since we're not getting Nigel and Danielson at all in London, do you think we can safely assume we're never going to get that match in AEW? I am not sure why people are so confused because it has been mentioned a thousand times. Danielson is not retiring. He is no longer going to be a full-time wrestler. He said he wants to wrestle until he dies. So if he doesn't die in the next 13 months, then we could have Nigel and Danielson at All In 2025. We could have Nigel and Danielson at all in 2026. We could have Nigel and Danielson at all in 2026. Any time. <laughs> He's just winding down his full-time career. He will continue to do matches unless he leaves and goes to WWE. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. It is Fun Friday! Woo! So, yeah. call us, 1-800-878-PLAY. Old Daniel will pick up the phone. 7529. Tell him what you want to talk about, and then uh, we'll get you on the air. 1-800-878-PLAY. 1-800-878-7529. Say it right. You're in quite a mood today. It's Fun Friday. <laughs> 1-800-878-PLAY. 1-800-878-7529. Weren't you, t- weren't you I got triplicate? It. Were, were you not taught triplicate on that number? I've got it. I'm not running an ad here. I'm running a radio show. I'm going to speed it up while I'm at it. Now, the one other thing I want to talk about regarding old Ric Flair and him being gone from AEW. Uh, more time to sell Wu Wings. At the bottom of this article at the front page of WrestlingObserver.com is That's the following line. Out. The Rock Seven Bucks Productions is currently in the early stages of working on a biopic about Flair's life. <laughs> Naturally. Naturally. Color I me uninterested after I... who killed WCW. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Imagine the balance uh, it's going to be. Oh, it's going to be something. All right. Uh, 1-800-878-PLAY. 1-800-878-7529. You can also text me, 425-780-7566. And we do have a caller on the air. Ray from Austin, you're on the air. What's up? Hey, Brian. Hey, Mike. Shout out to the Twitch homies. I sent a text last week, but it didn't get read because uh, it doesn't matter now. It's changed. I got like 5,000 texts wondering. here in my bin, my friend. I'm a very busy, famous man. But what's your question? 
what are the odds that we get belt collector Joe Hendry, where he wins both the TNA title and the NXT title? Why do you think this is going to happen, my friend? Well, I mean, reports have said that he's going to be on NXT for uh, a, a lot of, of the next few months. And I think that if, if you watch Impact, I don't know if you do or not, but it's clear that they're setting him up to win the title uh, next week's Slammiversary. And I think, this is just fancy booking, but I think this would uh, bridge a way for Trick Williams to turn heel on him, on uh, Joe Hendry, saying that this guy's an outsider. Why are you cheering him? You should be cheering for me. Wait a second. Wait a second. And Trick, think- Trick Williams is going to turn heel? Yes, I, I think that that's what they could be doing. Hmm. Well, fans won't let that happen, I don't think. I think if if an NXT taping happens at, at full sale, there's no way. They they may be split, but there's no way people are turning on Trick. I don't. I can't see it. Yes, but Drew I, or uh, Ray. I'm sorry. I want to thank you very much for the call. I see Henry winning the title though. I, I mean, the, listen. Is it impossible that he wins both titles? No. Can I see any? Scenario where Trick Williams turns heel? No. No. I don't see that happening. Henry winning the TNA title, though, yes. Absolutely. I think the most likely scenario is that, yes. He wins a TNA title, but not the NXT title. And that's what they need anyway. Look, I don't. it's not like Trick Williams, I don't think, is going to appear on an Impact or something like that. But Moose has held that title. He's had multiple runs with it. You've had passed it around to different people. Alexander had it. He had a great reign, all that. But they have nothing exciting that takes place with it. No exciting title matches that you can make. Now, at least this way, Joe Hendry having that title in NXT can try to drum up something. And much like Jordan Grace, maybe Hendry can defend that title against somebody coming over and you know, Javon Evans, except you would want Javon Evans to win. He can face somebody over from the NXT roster. This guy notes he can't turn tricks. Wait, he, he can't turn turn trick? Or Brandon turn from Virginia, you're on the Wait. air. What's going on? Hold on now. <laughs> hey, guys. This is Brandon from Portsmouth, Virginia. Portsmouth, and, um, yes. I wanted to ask, yes. I wanted to ask a, a nice, thought-provoking, deep question on this fun Friday for us. So, it's a, it's a would you rather. Would you rather fight Ten duck size. I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. One Braun Breaker size duck. So think about that. Do on that, and I look forward to hearing your response. I've I've taught kids jujitsu for years. I would much rather face ten uh, duck sized Braun Breakers. I think so. Smash them six ways from Sunday and revel in it. At least try to stomp and kick them away a little bit. I mean, what are you going to do with a Braun Breaker sized duck? I know how aggressive that thing would be to you. That that would be tough. Brandon has never fought a normal-sized duck, or he wouldn't ask this question. Mm. This person's angry and answer his text. Oh, I'll bet you anything I know what text it is. I'm not going to answer the text about the chicken wings, my friend. This person there says, uh, I'm not saying we want AEW to go down, but imagine how funny a Dwayne documentary would be on AEW and how many lies would be told. It's not, it's not that, here's the thing. The problem, the problem with who killed WCW is you just let these guys go on there. It's not like Rock told them to lie. He had them go on there and tell their stories. But then there was like, no, oh, hey, you know, that story's not true. That story's not true. That guy's lying about that. Oh, here's the other side of the story. There was none of that. It was like George Nori on Coast to Coast. (laughs) <laughs> any any maniac can tell any story he'll go with it at least art was like wait a second he had a filter. there was a brawn breaker sized duck uh, he knew how to play it you know you can't just let these things go unchecked that was the problem inmates running the asylum and i'm sure it's going to be the exact same way it's going to be the exact same way with the rick flair documentary imagine eric bischoff smiling at the end of that one This person here says, am I crazy for thinking Tony should have been the one to turn on Mariah? Isn't hometown hero Mariah going to be cheered like crazy at all in? Well, yeah, probably. Where's Tony from, though? But I, you know, I thought, I thought that Tony was going to turn on her Hmm. because I could not for the life of me figure out why 
for months and months and months and months and months and months. All the people did was cheer Tony, but they would not turn her baby face. It was like it killed every feud. Like she faces Deanna Parazzo. Feud's dead. Nobody cares about Deanna. Faced what's her face? The professor. Nobody Serena cared. Deeb. It was dead. I was like, okay, the fans want to cheer her. They want her to be a baby face. So like turn her baby face. But they refused. And so my theory was, okay, the only way this makes sense is like she is gonna turn on Mariah. And then Mariah is going to go to Wembley as a baby face and beat Tony Storm. It's like, okay, well, that'll make sense. Instead, she just was a cheered heel for six months, killing every feud. And then, eventually, Mariah turns on her. So Mariah the heel is going to Wembley to challenge Tony. We'll see how it goes. I mean, it's a good angle, but I had a lot of questions. I don't believe this is true, but Lenny, you're on the air. What's going on? Lenny, where, where are you, brother? Ohio. Oh, there you go. What's going on? Oh, hey, how's it going, y'all? Not bad. <laughs> so, I just happened to hear you speaking on... You know, the Tony turn after I specifically told you months ago that the single was leading somewhere. You and so many others didn't think it was going anywhere. Well, of course it was now, going somewhere. You get the turn, we got a hot, a legitimately hot match heading into Wembley. Now, conversely, three weeks from tomorrow, you got what's essentially a, uh, you know, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. Well, it's essentially a foregone conclusion with Cody beating Solo, where the anticipation is not for the match itself, it's for what everyone's expecting to happen after, with Roman coming back. Now, I, and this is just me, but I don't think you can call an angle hot if the anticipation and what everyone's buzzing about isn't for one of the individuals who's supposedly leading the group, even though they have next to no real credibility whatsoever, given they've been losing more than they've been winning, facing the top guy in the company. Already but it's it out. Roman sorry. returning. But, you know, WWE has everyone trained to believe that, you know. So you're, you're trying to tell it, me, you're trying to tell me that is, WWE is not team. hot right now. This is, this is not a hot promotion. I believe they have numbers that will lead people to think this, but I do not believe that numbers are necessarily the be-all, end-all. And I think this is something that for far too long people have been led to believe. They're very uh, – I guess the best way I can say it is they're over-celebrated mid. <laughs> and I've seen this with countless sports teams that get a ton of attention that they really don't deserve when really they're just middle of the road. So you're it's telling me the brand, WWE, you're telling me what, WWE right now brands. is middle of the road. It's mid. What legitimately good angles do they truly have right now that, you know, don't have I mean, don't require some semblance of mental gymnastics. I mean, your top angle going into SummerSlam is Cody versus Solo. No one believes Solo is going to win. And furthermore, if just if, and I know there's no short of injury, there's no chance this happens. If Solo were to win, it would be up there with Jinder Mahal for the worst title win in recorded. History. So, so when I'm Solo Sokoa is out there on that. SmackDown, sold out SmackDowns, thirteen thousand people, and the fans are going crazy chanting, "We want Roman every week," and we're building to a big SummerSlam match and the return of, of Roman Reigns. Someone who's not there, not hot. Then, they want him. That's not hot. That's we want the guy that we've seen that is legitimate 
versus this person standing here in front of us that it isn't, that we don't care to see, that even if you dress them up and, again, this, and I actually find it funny I'm tying this back to gender, it was the last job where they thought they could throw a suit on and, hey, he's important. No, he really isn't. But you keep believing that. So, well, so CM, this this CM long Punk Drew McIntyre seems with, pretty cut and dry. Yeah, CM Punk Drew McIntyre not hot. Yeah, <laughs> not easy to follow. Drew McIntyre is, <laughs> you know, that's the funniest thing. <laughs> Drew McIntyre is 2013 Punk. He is without a doubt the hottest man in the company, and he is exactly where Punk was 11 years ago, with Punk being the human embodiment of everything that drove him out the door in 2014 because drew is right with all of it okay so and so what about end, what about uh rhea, rhea and live and, and dom lose. not hot no Phrasing. i mean no he said yeah i imagine the russo inspired booking with live on top of Drew or Dom and Dom on her, yeah, that's all fine and well. But honestly, I'd, I'd actually venture to say Liv looks worse now than she did when she cashed in on Ronda. Wow. At this point, wow. you, what you have there is a Well, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, my friend, I, I hear the music. We got to go. But uh, back in a moment with more. I told you it was going to be a fun Friday. Observer Live. Don't ever tell me I don't let people have their voices heard. <laughs> Man. Fun Friday! Every Friday here on Wrestling Observer Live. Only on the Mighty Sports Byline mm-hmm. Broadcasting Network. That's right. <laughs> no offense, this person says, but Lenny is going through mental gymnastics. That is what he accused us of. I don't see the difficulty in some of those things. It does not take a lot of mental gymnastics. With That's the point. That's why a lot of people like these storylines. It's very simple. A lot of people can't understand why, like, the Liv Morgan Dominic thing is. And the only thing I could tell you is if you go back and look at, like, everything around Eddie and Ray and Dominic and who's his daddy and all that stuff, a lot of people hated it. If you look online or reviews of it, people hated it. It got good ratings. It was a novella for a lot of people. It suckered in a lot of people that, again, they're a girlfriend or a boyfriend of someone who's watching wrestling and they get into it. That's the appeal of that storyline. Now you can't. Hey, our producer act- told us during the break. Tell us a story there. Your friends have been texting you. Daniel? Yeah, hey. I've been getting texts from people I didn't even know uh, watched wrestling anymore uh, about that storyline. They're super into it. That's right. Just random friends, casuals, texting you about this storyline. And you can't just have that. But they have an end goal, and that end goal is Rhea Ripley coming But it's mid! Shop. But it's mid. I can't yes. follow it. Gymnastics needed. I can follow it. Follow it a lot better than that Tony Storm Ryan. Anyway, we do have to wrap up Fun Friday. I got to go make myself something to eat. I got a lot going on, everybody. Salmon? But we are here. No, I'm going to have uh, some some eggs and some sausage and some berries and some avocado. This time? Ooh. Uh, I may even wait, post a... Yes. I'll post a picture of it on my subscriber X. I'll show you guys what I've been cooking lately. Now, all of a sudden, you like avocado? Yeah, it's great. You're such a hipster now. You bashed it before. No, it actually tastes good and is good for you. Unlike this discourse. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.